Chris Esperance, and this is Comedians and Sneakers Playing Basketball. The sneaker we're showcasing today is the 2014 Progressor 4s. Ultra suede textile, dual sole outsole, comfortable but durable and maintains traction. These sneakers are 10 ounces light, 3 ounces lighter than my PT3s. This sneaker demands attention. The rich gold on this sneaker kind of looks like lightning crashing down on earth just a little bit and I think that looks cool. Also, if you couldn't tell already, these shoes are technically for wrestling. Why did I pick wrestling shoes? Because today's guest comedian has top rope energy. The electric, the versatile, hilarious Keen Cobb. Keen's been in the stand-up comedy game for 10 years now and has become a staple in the Philadelphia scene while being known across many comedy circles. I'm not sure if he sleeps or gets tired. I've never seen him yawn. When Keen's on stage, I take note. If a room is dying, Keen will bring that audience back to life. He's the Baron Davis of comedy. I've known Keen for about three years now, and if we weren't filming this episode, Keen and I would be at a court this same day, this same time, playing basketball. That's why I'm excited to have Keen Cobb on this episode of Comedians and Sneakers Playing Basketball. You go ahead and, and check them out. Dun, 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 yes, cue the music. Cue the music. Shabang! What in the world? Shabang! Are these wrestling boots? You got that right away. You talked about wrestling before, like, yeah. and even thinking about going into wrestling. I'm going to deal with so many freaking drop kicks and Stone Cold Stunners <laughs> in these. But when you, you say wrestling, like, WWE wrestling, not yeah. like Matt. I mean, not like uh. You can you can still wear the same gear. Right, right, right. More time. Yeah, I, I bet I bet the that scene, mm -hmm. specifically, like that WWE type. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's called locally, but pro wrestling. Pro wrestling, okay. Yeah. Um, I bet that scene has ha has similarities to like getting into comedy, just as far as like. Oh, bro, there's so many, like, wrestlers that end up doing... What the French? Okay. How are we feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling I'm like doing a, a DDT right now. <laughs> no, but yeah, a lot, of, a lot of wrestlers end up, like, doing comedy. Like, uh, Rob Van Dam. There's a guy now named Dolph Ziggler. Mick Foley's done some stuff. Mick Foley? Mankind? Mankind. A lot of times they just tell stories, though, but, like, right. they're so wild. It's gonna be hilarious, regardless. I mean, that makes sense though. Like all those guys, The Rock. Yeah, they have super huge duper. personalities, mm -hmm. which is dope. They look like baller sneakers, like from afar. They look like I'm in Japan right now. On a on a comedy wrestling tour. Exactly. Would that be Would that be your life? What? Doing doing WrestleMania and then uh. Then, then, then an hour, right then an hour set. Hell yeah, dude! Before or after? That's light work. I'm not even doing nothing either. I don't sweat up the storm though, but land storm. But you know, whatever. They look good. Hey, hey. What? Cool. Mm. What? <laughs> yeah. Sit, sit. <laughs> That's. Could that be a thing? What? Uh. No, wrestling and basketball together. No. I'm no. just imagining like kick you, no, DDT, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. three point shot. Like cat, cats, <laughs> cats, walk, cats complain over like, oh yeah, like tat, like touching. The yeah, yeah, so, like, yeah. A straight up kick. Yeah, I've gotten threatened. No. Um, uh, all right, let's play. Uh, what word do you want to use? Let's go with stunner. When you're done your set, are you? Did you record it? Like, do you always yeah. listen to it? I record every single one. Been doing that since I started. And uh, I'm very happy with it. Mm. You gonna think I'm related to the berries? Nope. Oh! Ah! Uh, you still get nervous? Every Four time. Sets? Really? That makes me nervous. Cause like, one, I mean. Um, that you still get nervous gives me like, 
because even last night, it doesn't get to the point where I'm like, I'm not, I can't go up. Yeah. But it's like, when when I get the um, hook shot one one and then you. Yeah. That's where I'm like, oh, like it get, it just dawns on me and like everything that weighs was so down. So tough. Uh huh. Nah, you shouldn't feel like that. Um, when I when I say I get nervous, I do, but it's not like a it's not like a um, I'm terrified kind of nervous. It's uh. just like. What am I saying? How am I gonna do it? Right. True. But the, the, the crazy thing is, I do still get like uh, blank a few times. Where, like I'll forget what my set's gonna be like. It's kind of wild. It doesn't look like it. That's the art, baby. Yeah. Ah. You use improv a little bit anyway. Oh yeah, for sure. Just being comfortable with with what's not, what I don't know what's gonna happen. Just like as soon as it as soon as it happens it reacts, it just go with it. But then wearing these wrestling because I feel like I'm about to jump off the top rope. Stop the rope. Stop rope. Stop rope! Nope. What made you laugh growing up? Cartoons was the norm. But when I was like three, I had cable in my room. And I would try to stay up as late as I could for some reason. And I'd watch like old stuff on on Nick at night. So I'm three years old laughing at jokes that was written in like the 70s uh. and 60s. And it was dope. But because of that, I remember growing up, I didn't make kids laugh, I made adults laugh. I would watch like sitcoms with my dad. He had me watch mm. SNL super early. Oh, he had you watch SNL? Yeah, like he didn't, he didn't like sit He's me like, down and force well, me. Hey, man. Hey, you watch this. Yeah. No, it, it had like me it. on and I would watch it. And I remember, I remember watching like Dennis Miller do like the, do like the weekend update. Not understand much of it, but just knew it was funny. It's challenging enough where I'm like, all right, I don't think I, I'm not like, I haven't crafted the joke well enough to do it on stage Bro, based it, on the reaction. Ugh. It's not that I didn't understand <laughs> it, but like you'll write a joke, you do it, and it doesn't work for some reason. That's only because your skill isn't at that joke's level yet. Yeah. So hold on to the joke. Yeah. And then at, in like a year or two, you might be able to tell the joke. Right, right, right. That's exactly right. It's like when you're at if you're if you have if you're athletic, yeah, but you don't quite have the skill yet, right? Like you do a crossover yeah, so and the ball ends up over there, but you could like bang on somebody. Exactly. Even though you don't mean it like that, yeah, it still lands like that. So yeah. it's like there's an adjustment there that needs to be made. Woo! Finally. Yeah. Yeah. Like wake up, go get some shots up, or go work out at like real exclusive ass gym work all day writing funny stuff and then at night go get drunk with friends and tell jokes Ugh, it's a dream baby writing for snl balling doing stand-up that's the dream baby people are living that life right now i know so it's, and that's the thing like the longer you do it the more you see your friends succeed so you learn <laughs> ah, so you learn it's not impossible yeah it's definitely attainable, he's got to get it. Yeah. Got the comedian, King Cobb. He's a sneaker to match his style. He's got a big personality, a lot of energy, loves wrestling. Sneaker guru? Yo, man. Sneaker guru. Those are sneakers right there? Yeah, man. You said, uh, you said wrestling and uh, big personality, right? Yeah. And like they always say, lightning only strikes when you power slam, so. Anywho, I'm running late. I gotta go meet up with Tiger Woods. I'm about to play squash, so. Deuces. I heard y'all got some good comedy guys out here.